What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Disc Golf Nerd Plastic Podcast, Episode 8. I want to do another uh, beginner-focused uh, podcast here to try to help some folks out. And what I want to talk to you guys about is how to build your bag. Um, you know, a lot of people that have been playing for a long time kind of naturally put together a bag that fills in a lot of the different roles that you need, uh, you know, just to make sure that you ha- you're you totally covered when you're out there on the course and you won't find yourself missing a disc for the shot that you need uh, for whatever course that is. Um, this is a very difficult pursuit, and uh, I think most disc golfers that are serious about disc golf and, and uh, you know, and enjoy collecting different discs and stuff like that, uh, myself included, it's kind of a lifelong pursuit. Um, there are some people that are kind of just real set in their ways they know exactly what they want to throw and what they want to carry and uh they're all just done you know they have they have all the molds they like they've been able to put together a system that works for them covers all their bases and uh you know in terms of the different shots and uh shapes and lines that they need to throw uh, out there on the course and they're done um kind of by way of uh running this channel i'm always you know obviously with with doing as many reviews as i've done uh, I've tested a whole lot of plastic uh, over the years, so it's difficult for me to narrow things down. Uh, it's funny, I was actually um, talking with the Disc King on, on Facebook, chatting with Matthew a little bit, and uh, we were talking about uh, The Undertaker, and he was saying how it looks, you know, he thinks it looked a little bit like a stalker without a bead, and, uh, you know, I was like, oh, let me go grab my stalker and take a look at it, and then uh, I was like holding on to this old Z stalker that I have, I'm like, man, I really like this thing, uh, you know, I mentioned it to him. I was like, stalkers are great. You know, sometimes I miss having a stalker in the bag. He's like, why don't you, well, why don't you have one in the bag then? And I'm like, sir, I've done nearly a hundred disc reviews at this point. Like, lines have to be drawn somewhere. You know, if I put every disc I liked in my bag, I'd be walking around with a wheelbarrow full of, full of plastic, you know, out there on the course. Um, so many discs are just great. I, I've thrown and tested so many that are totally valid great flying nice discs that that could be used and uh, a lot of times the margin between the one you like and end up carrying and another one that doesn't make the cut are very slim and sometimes it's just familiarity you know uh sometimes i'm just reluctant to change out something new when i already throw something that could cover the same the same basis so that's usually the thing that'll uh you know get a disc to break into my bag is if it's like similar to something i already throw but uh, noticeably better in some respect. Um, but yeah, if it's like, basically I could just keep throwing the same thing I'm throwing now, I've got to the point now where I pretty much have to just be like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to let it ride. We'll test this thing and, uh, post a review and then it's, it's got to go because if I keep it around, it might make its way into my bag and just kind of upset my system. Um, you know, I talked about it when we were in the, the episode where we talked about, you know, should you throw a mixed bag, carry a mixed bag, and, uh, you know, probably one of my favorite bag setups is when I was throwing purely Discraft. It was a simple system, and I liked it, and then, uh, reviewing stuff like MVP and Dynamic Discs and Latitude 64, uh, I found a bunch of great molds, and, and some of them have been integrated into my bag, uh, very successfully, and I, I've been happy with that change. Um... But yeah, there, there, there comes a point where you kind of have to just like leave uh, good enough alone and uh, stop switching stuff out because sometimes it's better just to be comfortable and familiar with a disc than it is to put something new in the bag, uh, even though it's always fun to have some new plastic out there to, to, to throw and try out. Sometimes you just gotta be like, all right, you know what, I'm just gonna stick with what I, what I know and what I uh, already use. Um, to, you know, there's tons of golfers out there that just have their set of discs, and uh, you know, maybe they weren't even ones that were picked very specifically. They just what they ended up with, and they just try to make it work. That's totally fine. But if you're trying to take your game to the next level, you need to know uh, your plastic, and you definitely want to be thoughtful with the way you uh, you know create your bag, build your bag, and how to uh, put together the system that you're going to be carrying out there on the course. Um, one thing that I want to mention too, before we get into the specifics on building your bag, is uh, you don't necessarily have to set up one specific setup and only always carry that exact setup. Like I, I have for years, you know, had discs that were kind of on the fringe of my setup 
that I would add in and kind of alter the bag uh, based on where I'm playing. I think most pros and players would do that as well. Like if you're going out on a day, you know it's windy, you're going to want some more overstable stuff. So, you know, maybe uh, uh, you know you want a nice overstable midrange or a putter in the bag where if you're playing on a normal calm day, you might not necessarily need those. Um, stuff like that, you know, or if you know it's going to be wet and... Uh, you know, rainy out where you're going, that's going to alter what you're going to carry sometimes. Like the baseline plastics have a better grip when they're wet, so that might be something to think about. Um, also, in general, when it's a rainy round, sometimes I like to just downsize my bag as much as possible, um, you know, and just kind of go a little bit more simplistic. You're already making some concessions. You're already not going to play as good as you possibly could when it's really rainy and gross out. So sometimes I'll just take out less plastic in those kind of uh, situations just knowing that that's less stuff that I need to keep dry and all that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, even uh, a couple of times I've played, like, and I know it's rainy, but I'm going out anyway. I won't even bring my bag. I'll just bring, like, a small, like, a backpack or something like that with a few discs in it. Just keep it all dry because I don't want to get my entire disc golf bag soaking wet. Um, but that's just on a casual basis. Obviously, if you're playing a tournament, um, you're going to want to have all, all, you know, everything that you want to have. But my perspective comes more from a, a casual more for fun, recreational type player. I don't really play tournaments and stuff. I'm trying to get into more of that type of situation, but for the most time, uh, most of the part, uh, most of the time, rather, I'm out with my friends or uh, even out solo testing discs and stuff. So I don't worry about it as much. So let's talk about building your bag. First and foremost, you need your putter, and you need your putter to be something that you're confident in. I definitely recommend having two putters. Um, in your bag that are just designated for putting. I'm not one of these people who thinks that you absolutely should never throw your putter. Um, I I putt and drive and approach with the same discs. Um, I try not to drive the ones that I use inside the circle um, too often, but it can happen. But I also, I personally use premium plastic soft neutron putters from uh, Axiom, so they're really not like in danger of getting beat up if you're using a baseline putter like a dx avr pro d magnet pro d challenger or a classic judge or warden or whatever it is um baseline that's made to kind of break in you're going to want to probably keep the ones that you're using inside the circle strictly for inside the circle um i also recommend if you can get away with it you know and you like a putter that's also versatile enough to be thrown off the tee have a couple more that you use for driving. Um, another, you know, thing I harp on here all the time on the channel is, you know, don't be afraid to have putters just for throwing. Don't be afraid to throw putters. Um, they're very effective tools off the tee and for longer approaches and stuff. Um, I carry a, a number of putters specifically for for uh, for driving and throwing on longer shots, and not just for inside the circle. So you want your main putters. Probably best to keep those without, you know. You know, without driving them, if for no other reason you don't want to risk losing your main putter by throwing it off a tee and having it kick into the woods or something and uh, losing track of it, that's never good. So outside of your putting putters, you want to have a couple of different driving putters. I recommend having an understable and an overstable driving putter at least. You know, something that you can throw into a little headwind, something you can throw on a hyzer and get it to kind of bend around a corner. Um, it's really nice to have those discs. Also, you can switch to that overstable putter if you have to putt into the wind. If you have a headwind putt, I'll break out my more overstable Envy, and I'll use that for my headwind putt. And then I have, uh, you know, a more, you know, a couple more uh, straight to understable driving putters. I can throw on a little hyzer, let them pop up, and go very straight. Um, so that kind of covers most of your bases with with putters. You want to have a couple for throwing and driving. I recommend having at least one that you can throw very straight to, you know, turnover, and then also one that you know you can throw as hard as you want. It won't flip over accidentally, and it'll carry nice and straight. Maybe have a little finish at the end, or you can throw on a hyzer and have it hold that hyzer. Um, the Envy is a great throwing putter for hyzers, uh, just as a quick recommendation. So, so yeah. And then it's always not the worst idea to have like a super meat hook type overstable putter as well somewhere in your system that you could break out if you know. 
it's going to be really windy. Something like a, a ESP zone or, uh, you know, like a harp, like a, a tournament plastic harp or a really overstable putter. Um, the Prodigy A1, I've heard, are super overstable. So stuff like that that's kind of more of a special, a special occasion disc. Or if you have the room for it, just keep it in your bag because you never know if it's going to be windy when you get there and you weren't counting on it or in the occasional situation that you need that disc for. Getting into mid-ranges, a lot of people like to uh, layer mid-ranges, and really layering is a concept that I recommend throughout your entire bag. If you can kind of limit limit the amount of different models and molds that you carry, but kind of, uh, you know, cover more shots by having, you know, maybe different plastic types that have slightly uh, different flights to them, or, um, you know, most of the time it's based on wear. You know, you have a really beat up putter for understable a very fresh one for a uh, you know overstable stable to overstable you know that that kind of concept uh, should be applied throughout your bag it helps you keep things simple and if there's a disc that you like and you like it for a reason uh, use that to your advantage carry a bunch of them and uh, you know you can vary their their flight characteristics slightly based on things like plastic types and weights you know you can have an understable one that's a little bit lighter a little bit heavier one that's a little bit more stable that sort of thing you know that's, that's something that i i highly recommend i have a full video out on layering uh discs uh, in your bag if you want to get you know want to check that out you can find it here on youtube so getting into mid-ranges a lot of people like to really layer the mid-ranges and they'll only maybe even carry one maybe two molds of mid-ranges and then just have a lot of different uh variations Myself, personally, I don't throw a ton of mid-ranges. I tend to throw either putters or I step it up to a driver. Uh, I have some mid-ranges in the bag. I will use them on specific tee shot situations. I'll also use them for longer approaches in the fairway on par 4s and par 5s sometimes. Um, but most of the time, yeah, I tend to kind of go straight from putter to mid to uh, to driver. That's just kind of the way my game works. Uh, I like throwing putters. I'm comfortable with them. But it's nice to have at least, again, the same kind of concept is going to go throughout your whole bag. You want to have one that's nice and understable for tailwinds, for Anheusers in the mid-range distance, uh, you know, uh, category. And then you want to have something that you know you can throw with a full power throw and it won't flip over accidentally unless you really mess something up. And then it's always good to have some type of overstable mid-range, something that's really consistent. You know exactly what it's going to do. You can bend around a corner with it on a hyzer, and you can throw it into the wind. Um, again, you could just have a couple of really straight, to straight, straight stable mid-ranges in your bag. And if you know you're going somewhere that it could be windy, um, or if you have the room for it, you can throw in something like a Justice or, you know... Uh, a drone or a gator or something overstable in your bag so that you can use it for headwinds and uh, when you really need to go left and if you know you're going out on a windy day again I recommend bulking up on your overstable plastic um, for throwing into the wind it's just it's uh, save you a lot of strokes out there because uh, you can get in a lot of trouble throwing stuff that's you know not overstable into the wind if you throw something understable into the wind you're gonna you're gonna run into some trouble out there and I, I see people struggle with it out on the course all the time just flat out don't understand uh, the concepts of you know throwing in the wind and, and how to alter the the plastic and the your throwing style even into the wind it's it's a it's a tricky it's a tricky thing people in the Midwest are definitely better at it because they just have a lot of experience with that it's often real breezy in that part of the country but um, out here in Oregon it's hit or miss it could be really windy it could be dead calm um, so I like to kind of have you know multiple things in the bag to cover me just to make sure I'm, I'm covered no matter how the uh, the wind is, is is going when I get out to the course so um, into drivers you know, I don't necessarily feel like you absolutely must have fairway drivers and distance drivers. For me, in my game, sometimes I prefer to throw a mid-range than a, a fairway driver. Um, that's just a kind of a personal preference thing. Um, I can throw mid-ranges and putters uh, pretty accurately and get a decent amount of distance out of them. So I don't often carry a lot of... Uh, slower drivers is never something that I really got into in my game. I'm sure a lot of people would disagree with that. You know, things like T-Birds and Eagles and, um, you know, slower drivers like that are extremely popular and uh, for good reason. I totally get it. Um, but for me personally, I can kind of, uh, you know, bridge that gap between mid-ranges and then, and then faster drivers. Um, I also tend to throw 
faster drivers that are still pretty straight and easy to easy to, to throw accurately so I can kind of take energy off and throw them a little bit shorter distance without too much trouble um, you know based on what I'm carrying but the same the same rules gonna ha apply into drivers too you need something that's understable and not super long distance something that you could hyzer flip and throw real straight something you can bend around to the right on an anhyzer and then uh, you know if you if you want to get into some rollers and stuff you're gonna need something decently over, uh, understable for rollers as well and then Getting into the bigger, uh, bigger speed discs, you definitely want something that you know you can throw straight, something that you know you can throw into the wind. Again, a nice headwind driver is something that you need to have in the bag somewhere. I always recommend having something that's very overstable in your bag, that's trustworthy. Um, you know, that's why discs like Firebirds and Felons and Predators are really popular because they're slow and they're extremely consistent. You can throw them into stiff winds and they'll, they'll still handle it no problem. And also for skip shots, it's always great to have a really overstable disc um, in your bag in terms of a driver. Um, for me, I'm basically throwing, uh, you know, I have a couple of understable discs for tailwind and turnovers. So I got the Jade in there for, for tailwinds, um, you know, where I'll, I'll throw it very soft, maybe 50 60 percent power and just let it pop up and carry because it's a very uh, kind of touchy understable disc but if you get it flipped up just right it'll hold dead straight in the tailwind which is nice um, so I have one of those in there I'm experimenting with my understable turnover disc right now I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna be but I always have something in there that I know I can I can trust to get it to fly left to right and that most of the time it'll hold it, you know, unless I mess something up or the wind knocks it offline or whatever. But something that you can trust to hold that turnover, that's a, a big important part of your uh, your driver setup. And then mostly I like to stick with things that are nice and straight that have a good dependability that I can, you know, for a distance driver, you want it to be something that you can throw about as hard as you want without it flipping over and going into uh, bad places. That's not something that you want to deal with. Um, so, you know, once you get something that you know for your power, you can put about as much uh, um, as much power on that disc as you want to off the tee, and it will never really kind of flip accidentally. It'll always just kind of maybe ride out and then come back. That's what you're looking for. And once you find that disc, stick with it. And if you start feeling like your your power is getting to the point where you're flipping over your go-to kind of stable distance discs, then it's time to step it up to something that's a little bit more overstable. Um, you know, I, I've always amazed watching, like, Ricky Wysocki throw these enforcers that he throws for distance. And he's hyzer flipping these things, and they, it looks like he's throwing you know, something like an escape or, you know, uh, like a trespass or something like not terribly overstable. You know, he's able to flip it up flat and get it to ride right for a long ways and come back. You know, the average uh, player out there trying to throw an enforcer for distance, you're not going to you're not going to get anywhere near the same flight as you'll see Ricky throwing that green enforcer that he's got that he's throwing a lot these days. Um, same thing with like Star Destroyers, the lines that you can see Paul McBeth throw these Star Destroyers, like uh, good luck duplicating a lot of that stuff. So you kind of have to figure out what works for you. And then as your arm speed gets better and better, you throw farther and you have to kind of tailor that out. That's another aspect of building your bag is that it's not a static thing. Um, unless, you know, the, the people that can throw a bag that's really uh, stable and consistent, it doesn't move around a lot are people at the higher levels, you know, like Paul McBeth has been throwing Star Destroyers for distance for years, and he doesn't need to step it up anything above that, because he can totally maximize those discs, you know, and uh, they can handle everything that he can put on them, and that's, and that's great, but as a beginner, you just kind of have to understand and realize that your bag is going to change, you are going to find things become too understable for you as you start to throw farther. The discs that was your favorite disc when you were starting out probably will not, you know, stay uh, that, you know, that that consistent or that effective for you as you start to get better. You know, it's always a work in progress. For me, just within the last year or so, I've switched out to, you know, trespasses were something I used for hyzers uh, when I first started throwing them. But now I'm putting more power on my on my distance drives, and they are my go-to like straight line distance drives that I know I can throw them about as hard as I want. They won't completely flip over unless I mess something up, 
and uh, you know I can trust them to have that little bit of fate at the end of the flight. But at one time they weren't filling that that role for me. They were more of a Heiser light headwind disc, and then I was throwing more understable stuff for distance. And so as you know, as your arm speed gets better, as you throw farther, you're going to have to kind of tailor. Uh, your bag to, to meet that it's mostly going to come into play with drivers and mid-ranges with putters and stuff you can kind of you know i guess it'll it'll happen with everything but i've been able to maintain you know magnets in my bag the whole time i've been playing you know if you throw something like a buzz or an axis or uh you know like a a, a mako or a rock or something like that you can kind of alter your throwing style to continue to get use out of those discs but when you're talking about throwing for maximum distance as you get better, you're going to want to kind of branch out and try more, slightly more overstable stuff as time goes on to kind of uh, grow your bag alongside your technique and your uh, your ability will kind of change over time. So that's my advice about building your bag. Let me know if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff. Uh, if you guys want to give me a rundown of what your bag consists of in the comments here, that would be cool. People could ch take a look at... Um, the stuff that you're throwing, maybe get some ideas on, on how to build a bag and figure out all the different shots that you need. But really, you could say it simply and just say you want something that's straight, slightly understable, over slightly overstable, and then very overstable. And for putters, mid ranges, and drivers, if you do that, you're going to be pretty well covered. Um, I also recommend, you know, having. Um, like a cheap disc somewhere in there. So if you throw, say you throw T-Birds, I totally recommend having a DX T-Bird in your bag because you know you can throw it. It's going to fly mostly the same as your other T-Birds, but it's cheap and inexpensive to replace. So if it gets beat up or if you have a shot over water or somewhere that could get kind of, kind of tricky, it's always nice to have a disc in there that you're not super concerned about losing that you can throw and commit to it and not have to kind of be like, oh, I really don't want to lose, you know, this is my go-to disc. So it's nice to have kind of a backup disc. And then also that DX or, you know, Pro D or Baseline Plastic could be very effective uh, if, it's, if it's wet out, you know, if there's a lot of uh, moisture on the grass or anything like that, or if it's raining, that Baseline Plastic has a, a really nice grip to it in the, in the, when it gets wet and that could be a, a lifesaver for you if you're out there on the course you know, sometimes the premium plastic gets really tricky to uh, control when it gets super wet so that's how you build your bag let's talk about a couple of, before i let you guys go i'm going to talk about a couple of other things you might want to consider having in your bag that aren't discs um, scorecards are definitely one of them i highly recommend keeping score it helps you kind of stay focused um, from hole to hole. You just write down your score and you move on. You're not thinking actively about your score and where you are in terms of under or over par. Write down your total strokes for the hole and move on to the next one. It helps you stay in the moment. Also, you can keep track of your progress. That way, I recommend I have one of those reusable scorecards by Discraft. Uh, I love that thing. It's perfect for me to keep my score and the score of my card mates while I'm playing. And then if you want to, you just take a uh, you know a quick cell phone picture of it, save that in a file somewhere, and you can keep track of your scores over time. And, and then uh, you can just erase it and keep using the same thing. It's also um, not just a piece of paper. It's got some stability to it, so you can write right on it. You don't have to, like use uh you know like a little clipboard or anything like that it's a you know hard plastic um, reusable scorecard really nice thing to have in the bag you got to have a mini in your bag if you're going to play any kind of um professional or sanctioned events or any type of tournament you're, you're definitely supposed to have a mini there are certain situations where you must use a mini to mark your lie and you're not legally allowed to use your disc um, so definitely you should have a mini in the bag and, you know, even occasionally on casual rounds, I'll use my mini just to kind of make sure I, I still, you know, get comfortable using it and knowing how, how to use it, uh, in a professional, uh, setting. And if I ever, you know, do play any sanctioned tournaments, I'll be completely on, you know, I'll fully understand how to use the mini and play and mark my lie, uh, legally according to PDGA rules. Um, other things you want to have in your bag. You know, it's always a good idea to have some type of snack in there. I always keep Sharpies in my bag so I can ink new discs or, uh, you know, s sign an ace disc if somebody wants that to happen. Or also, you know, sometimes I'll have buddies come out and they're like, oh, I just bought this new disc. Um, we're about to throw around. They haven't marked their name or, or number on it yet. 
uh, you have a sharpie right there so people can make sure that their their discs are marked and uh, hopefully if they l lose track of it somebody can give you a call and let you know that they found it that's always great another quick PSA to throw in here that I've mentioned before on the channel if you guys find a disc out there on the course give it back <laughs> try to give it back to the person please you know you would want your disc to get returned to you if you lost it and just because you may have lost discs and never got them back doesn't mean you should do that to somebody else give somebody a call don't just send them a text and then just ignore it you know if if they don't get back to you within a day or two send them a text give them a call leave them a voicemail it's not a hard thing to do also check out on facebook i'm i'm part of the uh Pacific Northwest Lost and Found group on Facebook. A lot of great people on there will post stuff, even if it doesn't have a name and number. You can post it. You can figure out who lost their stuff and reunite people with their plastic. You know you would like to get your disc back, so always you know make sure you're doing that for other people as well. Um, I uh, you know I've definitely reunited several people with their discs, and I've definitely had people reunite me uh, with my discs. So I always try to do that. I always recommend that you guys do that as well. Um, in terms of other things you want to have in your bag, I like to have a pair of dry socks in my bag, in a Ziploc bag, just in case I, like, step in a puddle or something gnarly, or you just get really sweaty feet during the round. Sometimes it's really great to take your, um, you know, take your boots off or whatever after the round and put on a fresh pair of socks. It just feels great, especially in the summertime. Um, well, in the summertime, I'll usually take my disc golf shoes off and I'll put on my Crocs or, my, you know, flip-flops or something like that for the rest of the day, but, uh... You know, it's always nice to have, uh, you know, the option to put on a, a fresh pair of socks if your feet get wet or muddy or anything like that. It's nice to have for sure. I usually keep a dry, uh, dry fit shirt stuffed in my bag as well in case I get really sweaty for the round and I want to change out my shirt or I want to go somewhere after the round and uh, I got really, you know, really, really sweaty and gross after the round. I can switch out to a clean shirt. That's always nice. And then you want to think about some, like, light first aid stuff, like band-aids and uh, that sort of thing. Maybe some hand sanitizer in case you touch something gross out on the course. That couldn't hurt. Um, that sort of thing. So that's my advice on how to build your bag. Um, a little bit longer episode here for you guys. Hopefully that doesn't uh, bother anybody. Thanks very much for listening. Again, leave uh, in the comments. Let me know, like how you guys built your bag maybe give us a quick rundown of what's in your bag um if you have an in the bag video uh posted on the internet let us know how we can find it I, i'm always interested to check out people's in the bags see what folks are throwing uh, that would be cool thanks very much for the support guys i will talk to you guys later all right cheers